you positive heads out there. Thanks for tuning your beautiful brainwaves into another episode of the Positive Head Podcast, where we are firmly convinced that creating success and happiness is rooted in understanding the ultimate nature of reality and the fact that as human beings, we are all immensely powerful fractals of the one and only source consciousness, which creates and animates all things. Now, of course, understanding this powerful truth is one thing. Applying this incredibly empowering wisdom to everyday life? Well, that's another. Which is exactly why we provide you with a fresh serving of soul food for thought five days a week to help constantly remind you of what matters most. You are it. And I'm your host, Brandon Beecham. I'm the reflection and extension of you who will be here each Wednesday interviewing a different consciousness changemaker and on the other four weekdays, leading the way to ensure that your perspective is consistently expanded, your vibration is constantly elevated, and your heart is overflowing and full. And you guys have heard me say that if I ever run ads on this show, it will only be with a company that I fully support because I believe their intention is to make a positive difference in the world. Well, I'm pleased to announce that day has arrived and that this episode of the Positive Head Podcast is being brought to you thanks to the support of Gaia. If you're not familiar, Gaia is the go-to source for streaming consciousness content online. And you can sign up for your first month for only 99 cents at Gaia.com forward slash positive head. That's spelled G-A-I-A dot com forward slash positive head. Check it out. All right, all you positive heads, on this week's interview episode, I'm very excited to have a wonderful friend of mine, Halcyon, here with me on the show. Halcyon is an author, host of the weekly broadcast Hug Nation, and co-founder of the lovely Burning Man camp that many of you burners, I'm sure, have seen right there on Esplanade Pink Hearts. Uh, Hey there, Halcyon. Welcome to the show, my friend. Oh, so good to be here, Brandon. I'm super stoked. Uh Super sad. We've been talking about this for like ever since I think it was like two lucidities ago. I even before that we had talked about having you on and then I pulled up and I it was so tight. I'll, I always remember it was so tight finding a spot and we were showing up late and we came and we got really, really close to your sort of partitioned off area for your your friends and you showed up like, Hey, you're taking my spot and then and then, do you remember this? And then Absolutely. I'm like, Well and then very quickly I'm like realized I'm like, Hey, that's Halcyon. And we hadn't really met in person at that point, I don't believe. And and then as soon as I was like, oh, I'm Brandon, we've been talking via email about, you know, just randomly. And you're like, oh, crap, I can't really kick him off now. <laughs> it, it, that was one of those really like cool things that happens at events where, I mean, at Burning Man, Pink Heart is, is so... Uh, like we're so specific about our camp plan, you know, we wouldn't have been able to to make any adjustments. Every inch is is specked out in a layout. For. But that was a uh, lucidity, and we had a pink heart, you know, area specked out, but it was really loose. And so, but there's that 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 moment of like, okay, do we need to defend our borders here? How do we do that peacefully? <laughs> you know, you know and, and so get and, out and the pink like, heart gun. <laughs> I know, I know. It's, it seems it's shoot like, him with bubbles pre- until he runs off. Vibe. Protect the vibe by any means necessary. But then it's like, it's always so cool when we have someone who, whether by accident or misunderstanding or just like the, the, the tightness of the camping situations, when someone's like, gosh, I just set up my tent. And we're like, well, let me tell you what we're all about. And if that resonates, then, you know, stick around. And I think yeah. that was, it was it was so awesome to camp with you. Yeah, it really was. It really was. And, uh, you know, we've been talking about it. Like I said, that was, I, I believe it'll be two lucidity this, yeah, almost two years ago. And we've been talking about having you on the show since before that. So I'm right. so glad that you're here. And I want to start off with, uh, my, my listeners know I'm pretty, um, pretty uh easy to predict when it comes to starting off with the same question ending with the same question and the question i always start off with you're in an elevator the the woman next to you looks over says what's your passion you got 10 floors to answer what do you say well um i'm wearing a vera wang gown and my shoe wait did you say fashion or passion passion (laughs) 
<laughs> uh, just kidding. No, uh, um, my passion is uh, giving good. people <laughs> giving people permission to be their true selves. Um, I do that by finding and sharing as much joy and growth and opportunity to just stretch in my own life. And then I try to share that. I've been online sharing my life for over two decades. And I try wow. to make my journey into a learning process for others. And I'm very aware that uh, most of the time I'm speaking to myself, but if it resonates with other people, as I find that people are are often very alike, um, it can be a growth opportunity and it becomes like a community around these universal ideas. But I very much am aware that what I try to do is provide a belief buffet. I put things out, taste it. If it feels good, if it feels right, then keep eating. Mm. And if it doesn't feel good, spit it out. Yeah, I love that. I love that. And, you know, seeing uh, some of your broadcasts with with Hug Nation and your, you know, you now you put this out via Facebook Live, uh, archive it as a podcast, uh, YouTube uh, and, you know, catching some of your broadcast. I always am so inspired by how vulnerable you will be. I mean, I've seen you in tears. I've seen you come out with very personal stuff like have you always been, um, you know, that just wearing it, your heart on your sleeve, that open uh, to the world? Because, you know, as you know, there's not a lot of people that uh, kind of go there like you do. It, it's no. And it actually it's I mean, I've, I've always been weird, but I've not been <laughs> that that super transparent, uh, like radical transparency that I really think is a part of my calling. I, I had an experience where I was in, involved in the early days of the Internet and I had a, a humor zine called Prehensile Tales, Prehensile.com, where I would share funny stories and and every once in a while, people would like really push to know more about the guy behind the stories. Who's writing these? And so then I started to share more and more personal stories. Mm-hmm. And every, and I can remember the time I shared something that I thought it was so vulnerable. I was so scared. I showed it was an article called Open Memo to the Women of the World regarding helping me have orgasms. <laughs> and I can, conf- I confessed some challenges I had, you know, I, I, at the time of my life, I had a, a huge issue, uh, completing and finishing and climaxing with sex with partners. And, and so I wrote about this thing and I did it in a funny way, but it was, it was scary. And I put it out there and I kind of, I I braced for the response and I got tons of responses of just love and acceptance and people saying, Oh my gosh, me too. I am so I've been afraid to say it because everyone thinks guys, you don't have that problem. And, and I was like, Whoa, this is incredible. And so I had this experience of, well, okay, well, if you're okay with me saying that, then what if I share this? And I, and I, what if I share this fear? And what if I share this insecurity? And what if I share this? And the, it was like this slow motion strip tease where I just <laughs> took off layer and layer of my insecurities and I, and it was profound. And I, and I realized that these things that I thought were the rocks that people would throw at me to hurt me became part of my foundation. Wow. And it became this like power, powerful feeling of invincibility when, when I owned all of my weaknesses and made them public. And then, and then, and then it just like, it created this, all the barriers to love out and in. And it was, and from then I just like, this is what I'm supposed to do. And I, so I've been using myself as a bit of a canvas of like, okay, this hurts. I'm, I can't pretend it doesn't, or I'm insecure in this moment. I can't pretend that I'm strong. I'm, I'm scared. I can't pretend it. And, and uh, there's, there's people who are, play the role of being the rock and the, the leaders that you, that tell you everything's fine, no matter what. And yeah. I'm, I'm a person who says, this is my truth. I hope you like it. Yeah. Well, you're, you're no question. You're, you're all heart and you are authentic as they come. I mean, because there's, I think more and more people are starting to realize that vulnerable is truly is a superpower. And when you open up in that way and you show people that you're willing to be vulnerable, it's so endearing to anyone who's a, a witness to it. Right. I mean, it's like, Dude, that has we been, can all relate. That has been, absolutely. And that's been something that has been exciting to see in, in the last couple of years that even in corporate settings, I, I, I was brought in as a co-founder of a, a very corporate company. A, the CEO had gone to Burning Man and his mind was blown. And so he recruited me And Mm -hmm. one thing that I witnessed because he was going through his personal journey and because we were working together and because of his vision of what he wanted to create in the world, we had these weekly gratitude circles that I, that I implemented. And he was so vulnerable and so authentic that it created this vibe in our office of camaraderie that was so deep 
And I, it went back to this, the, I, I, I don't know the exact quote, but there's something where I think Plato said that, you know, an army of lovers cannot be defeated. And I always thought mm. when I was younger, ha, 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 I thought it was a silly, you know, homophobic thing right, for right. kids to, to laugh at, you know. <laughs> right. But in this, in this corporate environment where people were being vulnerable and allowing themselves to love, you know, in a phileo brotherly way, um, it was, it, it became a powerful, um, tool and a, and a powerful force for the the corporation and i think that that you know when 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 old school people start to see the power of that the power of vulnerability you know we see some leaders obviously we have you know not pointing any fingers but where you know i'm never wrong uh, no matter what i'm always right right and there's a certain population of people that respond really well to that but I think that to love someone, to really say, I will follow you anywhere, you need to know that, okay, I see them. I see all of them. And yeah, I, th I think that we're seeing it. it uh, there's a, a lot more people are stepping off that fake pedestal of perfection and recognizing their shadows and confessing their truth and finding the power in that. Yeah, it is. It is uh, definitely inspiring in a world that has so much you know, uh, duality that seems to be just more and more, um, you know, opposing forces uh, are growing, you know, this ever widening gap of you have more Instagram, you know, here's my perfect life that I'm painting to you. You have so much of that sort of stuff going on. But then you, I think you have this movement of people being inspired by people like yourself to, Hey, you know what? Being vulnerable is, is cool. This is, this is beautiful. This is something that actually reaches people that actually touches people. And uh, so I applaud you for, 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 you know, what you're doing. I think that there's, you know, I, I saw a, a video this last week and it was some young Instagrammer that mm -hmm. was showing makeup -less pictures of her cystic acne face and a beautiful woman who was wow. suffering with intense cystic acne. You know, that was her life. Mm -hmm. And my first thought was like, <gasps> like, oh my gosh, like I remember my fears and insecurities about my acne growing up and all the, the you know, the, I used to be afraid to look people in the eye because I didn't want them to look at me, you know, and and, and seeing this young woman, I was like, that is a fucking warrior. You know, that is the, that's the power and the strength of, of the modern world, you know, not standing up and saying, I'm not afraid of anything. It's saying like, you know, I'm willing to take judgment. I'm willing to, to, to be my true self, even when I know that it's not what I, people have been told is, you know, right or correct or pretty. And yeah, I think that, that that more and more people are, are seeing that if you were on a spiritual path, you know, it's not about reaching perfection. It's about reaching truth. And that's, yeah. that's a, that's a scary and powerful thing. Yeah. I, I heard a quote recently that I just absolutely love talking about, you know, the whole, um, being on a spiritual path and it just really struck a chord. It was like, you know, your spirituality, it doesn't say anything about your spirituality based off of how long you meditate or, you know, how spiritual you sort of portray yourself, but rather how you deal with situations that don't go the way you want them to go. And that's like, Amen. wow. <laughs> oh like, my gosh. Oh that, man. Yeah. It's, that that's one thing that that's one of my, my current, um, uh, I think that one of the chapters or what the, the classroom that I've signed up for at this time in my life is, is that lesson. And that, mm. that idea of, you know, life is not about minimizing the obstacles in your life because you always have obstacles. You don't mm -hmm. want to have a life where you just at the beach sipping pina coladas forever. That would be boring in a week. Yep. But it's instead about recognizing that you have obstacles, finding a way to occupy yourself with obstacles that matter that you care about and then while you're in these obstacles recognizing this is not an obstacle this is life this mm. is the classroom this is the adventure this is where i grow and if the 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 really hard thing or the for me the thing that i'm really working on it's just kind of like when you is is remembering that while it's happening you know for i've been sharing my life online for so long that one of the reasons i do that is because i can i when i look at an experience after the fact and try to see it as a story, see how I as a protagonist had adversity, how I dealt with it, and then frame it in a way that I can see the lesson. I think the really hard thing is to remember as it's happening, 
that, oh, right, I'm in a classroom. I'm having an adventure. This anxiety I'm feeling is, is the same tension that I would feel if I was in the middle of a soccer game where I'm invested in the game. I, I, I really want to win the game. But if it's too intense, I know that I've, I've chosen this obstacle. This is part of the fun. This is the adventure that I've, I've picked up. And I'm, I, I don't really hate the person on the other side of the field. That's, that's an invented construct so that I can enjoy this drama. Yeah. And we can remember that while it's happening, then it, it, it's then when you, you know, slam your finger as you're hammering and building something, you know, you kind of chuckle a little bit. Mm. I say that. Not because I can do that. I'm saying that's what, I, that's what I'm working towards. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, you know, we, we we teach best what we most need to learn, I always say. And it is, uh, Absolutely. We're, we're in the process. And I, I, I'd be willing to bet you're better today than you were uh, five years ago or even maybe five months ago. Because it is, you know, anyone who's got as much heart in, in doing as much good in the world as you are, it's like the, growth is inevitable. It's just people get so caught up on getting to the end goal, I think, and and you know not uh accepting and loving the fact that the 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 journey is the goal right absolutely and i think that you know it's funny you say that because every once in a while i will i will go through an ordeal and and even if i'm like oh okay now like that i i could have done better or I, i go oh wait a minute if i look at how i dealt with that five years ago that that's you know, there's no way I, I, that, I would have freaked out. I would like, this mm-hmm. is my most intense burning man ever after 20 years. And, and I look back and I go, I think this would have broke me, you know, yeah. like five years ago, I think I, I, I didn't, I was not equipped, but it was like, okay, wow. I, this is what I've been training for. This is what I've been training for. And as, as a, uh, and I think that, that it, that's, that's exactly what happens is, is this your training, you know? And, and the only way I like to think about it, like if you wanted to get become a a badass in kung fu you would go and train with a master who would kick your ass over and over and over again (laughs) until you learned and so you want to get better at life then life kicks your ass over and over and over again until you get better at it right right that makes total sense so 20 burns man that's like that's what? Some speak up kitty speak up what? burns i've been to seven <laughs> i've been to seven and this was the first year off in six that that I didn't go. And it sounds like I missed an intense one, at least in your world. What, what was, yeah. what was, uh, intense about it for you and what, what, yeah. It well, just, let's talk about burner man in general, because we have okay, quite, let's a, with that. quite a few burners, <laughs> a lot of burners probably listening and a lot that uh, I know of some that are re- going to go this year for the first time. And you, know, what do we say to all the, the, the various levels of, of burners or, or would be burners, uh, out there listening? Well, one thing that that I have realized that a lot of people that are called to the things that are interesting to me and that I talk about are sometimes not just burners, but people that are attracted to the the qualities of the Burning Man community. And I realized that when I speak now, when I talk about Burning Man, I'm also trying to talk about uh, a knitting circle, a Comic-Con group, a... Uh, uh, any any place where there's a place of support, but for me, Burning Man has been the most profound uh, environment of support. And and there's, it, I guess you know, it's it, to take a step to what it is. It is a temporary city that's governed by these ten principles. And for me, some of the principles have profoundly changed my life. Uh, the gifting principle is is the one that took me the longest to get and has made the most profound uh, a change to my life. And when I talk about gifting and people like, oh, there's no money there, right? You just barter everything. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Barter is still an exchange of in the same way, an exchange that you would have between money and a product and a goods and service. Even barter is like, oh, I want corn for your labor or whatever. It's an exchange where you have a equal ledger Mm -hmm. plus one of yours minus one. We're equal. And so it's a transaction. But gifting is not a transaction. It is a one-way transfer of goodwill, of energy, of stuff, of anything, and with the intention of elevating another person's experience. People get caught up in gifting as being stuff, being, oh, I'm going to get a bunch of Chinese cheap bracelets and give them away, which is fine. But gifting is really about seeing the world as opportunities to make other people happier. Because what Burning Man, I think, tricks you into realizing is that when you make other people happier, 
you make yourself happier. Yeah, for and sure. Once, once I got that, boom, my whole life was changed. Yeah. And that's, I think one of the things, like I remember my first year when I went to Burning Man, I, I, I was pulled out onto the playa and by the person who brought me and I'm looking out at just this, all these massive sculptures and all these things that people have built. And I couldn't get my head around like, so wait, so the organizers make this, like who pays these artists? And they're like, no, 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 no. These people, these artists that are putting these things all together, they've been raising money all year. They are here because they want the opportunity to blow your mind. Mm. And, and, and when I like that whole idea that there's this metric of success and joy, that's outside of monetary you know, the commercial, the monetary one that I have been, had been raised in was like, Whoa, <laughs> wait, what, why? Like, I, I couldn't get it. Like, why would you do that? There's like, they're going to burn that at the end. Like what's, what's the payout? I, <laughs> I don't understand. And, and now I'm in a place where, you know, like I get a, a little windfall of a little cash, like my Bitcoin goes up or something, you know, and I'm like, oh, I could, I could get a new car stereo or I could get 2000 more servings of ice cream to give away. And, and I know that the, the, the joy I will get from seeing a thousand more smiles is going to be so much deeper than that, like little fun that I get from a deeper thump in my car. Yeah. And that's, that's, that's one principle. And then there's the principle of radical self-expression, which is another one that has profoundly uh, affected me, which been, because there's, there is, it's so rare to have a place where when you do something wacky, you will not get faced with an eye roll or a, or a feeling that, Oh my gosh, I'm that I'm stupid. I shouldn't have done that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, when you have an environment where any authentic expression is met with support and I know it's not, a, it's not utopia. There's people who are jerks and there's all sorts of bad stuff. But for the most part, if you are trying to figure out who you are, or if you are expressing an artistic vision, if you suddenly are like, gosh, what would happen if I put this sock puppet and started talking in a funny voice? Like you're going to have people that will start clapping or pick, put socks on their hands and that shift in dynamic from a world that is mm-hmm. shutting down this this deep heart truth of creativity that's in you to a world that's like fanning the flames and amplifying that, I yeah. believe, is the difference between a world going in the wrong direction towards mm-hmm. consumer poison and the world of allowing people's inner truths to uh, to illuminate the answers the world needs. Yeah. I mean, you mentioned, yeah, it, I think, the, the term, uh, you know, in, in a previous conversation that, that we want to hear your medicine. I think that you meant something like that. And I, I, mm-hmm. I love that idea, you know, like, and I, I'm getting these t-shirts printed up that say you are the medicine the world needs. Uh, how we, appropriate. I think that's the first time I've ever said that to someone too. No so way. that's a really cool synchronicity. Yeah. Someone said it recently uh, somewhere to me or in context to our conversation. I'm like, Oh, I really like that. And it just has kind of stuck with me. And, uh, so it, it popped out today when I was talking to you. So that's so, so, uh, synchronistic and awesome. Well, I definitely I'll, want, I'll, put me down for a shirt. You got <laughs> it. So, and I'll share So I, I, I had an experience at Burning Man that, um, where this really profoundly hit me. I was, I was walking through center camp and just felt drawn towards the main stage. And it was like mm-hmm. a powerful pull. And there was mm, a guy I've up on stage who, who it's, it, it is, and the guy up was, uh, was dressed super normal, not somebody that would normally catch my eye. And I'm not normally that someone that has the, that stops and listens to things at Burning Man. I'm just lots going on. I'm moving around. But for some reason, I just was like, I'm supposed to hear this. I'm supposed to hear this. And he started talking about, um, the maker movement and maker spaces and all these tools that we are now having in the world to, to bypass the, the old system where if an idea is to become reality, it has to get seed money. It has to get investment. It has to, you know, to, to get manufacturing and to, it, it is, there's a lot of, of barriers financially, but in the new world of 3d printing and maker spaces, a kid with an idea can, can get their idea into the world. And, yeah. And I started to, as I'm listening to this, I start to like get this vision and this awareness that there are these answers inside everyone to some degree. Some people's answers in them is a cure for cancer, but some people's answers in them is the the shoulder that a person needs at an important part of their time, you know, raising a good kid, but whatever, that when we tune into this truth inside us, we, we give forth, you know, this medicine and that, that. Burning Man is this beautiful instrument 
to to convince people or give people the courage or the support of the community to start tuning into that song. Because without that, without a community that says, listen, it's it's almost impossible to hear. The the volume of the video games, the volume of the traditional media, even, you know, entertaining good media, it's still you're being a consumer of it. And, yeah. and getting to a place where you shift to listening and creating in whatever way. I mean, the, the creating, that's another thing about Bernie Man. <laughs> I get on a roll, but it, 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 you start talking, <laughs> please. Any, anything. I mean, Burning Man also teaches you that the uh, art is not just what's on a canvas or what's on a pedestal or what's a sculpture or a painting or dance, but it's also the way you interact with the world. And it's the way that you parent and it's the way that you do body work. And it's the way you do whatever it is that is you acting in alignment with your truth. And I, I believe my faith is that when people listen to that voice and act in that from that place that gives them joy they are the medicine and if enough people do that we have massive shifts towards the healing of the world yeah i couldn't agree more that's absolutely the case and you know thinking of burning man it's i I think of um you know the the actual bible verse lest you become like a child you can't enter the kingdom of heaven and that's really what it's like it's a bunch of uh, uh, adults essentially are mostly adults or children there too, but uh, becoming unlearning what they've learned when their imagination was stomped out when they were five years old. And, and it's like coming back to that imaginative creative self where, you know, you're, your most joyous. And, you know, the, it, it, one other thing that I want to bring up is the, the gifting thing. Cause I remember when we were hanging out and spending some time at lucidity, we talked a little bit about gifting and you, you gave a wonderful description description of and you sort of touched on it there but I, I wanted to see if you remembered it um, because it seems like something you you'd, you'd talked about before so the, sort of the difference between the barter or buying something and how it's a sum zero versus you know if you gift something it's it's a sum two do you recall right. having that conversation yeah, well it's like I, I try to bring back to like a, a visualized Christmas morning if you celebrate Christmas or some gift giving experience when you buy a present for a kid um, well, okay, I'll be right. I'll take a step back. So when, when, when you are doing a transaction and you go to the store and you buy something, um, you give, you plus one, you give them, uh, the money minus one, they give you the stuff and you're at some zero. When you see a kid opening something on Christmas morning, they open it up and they get all excited. Yay. Plus one. And then when you see their excitement, it makes you happy. And that's plus one. So it's plus one, plus one, plus two. So instead of a sum zero, you now have this amplification and that starts to magnify. And then, and then, and then you get, you start to crave that. And I think that, uh, that plus one, plus one, I mean, it's infinitely greater than zero. Right. Right. And we know that from a even a scientific s- standpoint, if I am uh, doing some good deed to you, not only are uh, endorphins and, you know, all the feel good chemicals released in my brain, they're also released in your brain and anyone that witnessed the 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 good the kind event which is really really fascinating totally, when you look at it absolutely and that, and that's like so there's these things that have been happening now like the uh people pay for the the coffee behind them at starbucks and these mm-hmm. chains will go on for you know for hours and hours and hours where people and and the thing that i find so beautiful is that it it's such a small thing it's you know a five dollar experience for people but it's so profound that they remember it forever and it gets in the news and things because we have this narrative that that we you don't do that you don't just do something nice for somebody but when you get permission to do it it's like wait a minute we can do that yeah and then and you just and you and you it it changes your definition of who you are because when you i i think um i mean i spent a lot of time talking about gifting because of this effect that it had on me and 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 when you start to see more people that that kind of act in a way that is outside of the protect yourself, do what you know you have to do to, to get ahead. Instead, see people who get this idea of gifting. Sometimes I look at billionaires and I'm like, wow, if I had the opportunity to walk around with $100 bills all day and see people's smiles <laughs> yeah. and, and, it, and it wouldn't even affect my bottom line at all, like, <laughs> right. why wouldn't you do that? Like, right. you would be the happiest person ever. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but, the, but the good thing is, the good thing is you don't need to have $100 bills. You can have a smile, you know, you can have, uh, you know, you can show someone respect or be a good listener. And I mean, in a, 
I, I think it would be more more pronounced if I was giving away hundred dollar bills, but I definitely feel like when I'm in my kind <clears throat> mode, I feel mm-hmm. you know like Bill Gates and in, in the richness of the, of my human experience. Yeah, I, I learned uh, something. This makes me think of for my mother who, you know, is just really, really good with people and, and, you know, has a lot to say. I definitely take after her and her side of the family a lot (laughs) and, uh, you know, very good at building rapport and so much warmth. And, you know, I remember her saying to me one time and it's always stuck with me. She's like, yeah, whenever I come up against someone who's really grumpy or ugly with me or just seems, you know, off, I I make it a game to um, to win them over. And what a great approach to, you know, interacting with grumpy people as opposed to, you know, oh, screw them. They're rude. They're whatever. Like, oh, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to give of myself to to win you over. And it's uh, I've seen her do it time and time again where it's like, how can it's it's hard to be mad and stay grumpy at someone who's giving you love. Right. Yeah. And I think this is actually so significant at this time in our history in America, because it, there's, there's so much animosity and so much grumpiness yep. and it is so tempting to slip into righteous indignation in response to it. And I don't know if you saw, there was a, there was a, a thing that kind of went viral recently where Sarah Silverman was uh, attacked by the sexist troll that called uh, her yeah. the C word. And yep. she responded back instead of she, she demonstrated this in, in the, in the most beautiful way. She, she met this anger, this aggression, this hate, this contempt with love, with loving kindness and with attention and with care. And she was like, wow, I read through your posts. I, I see you're coming from a place of pain. That's got to hurt. And then he responded and shared some really vulnerable things about himself. And she reached out more and went back and forth and got this guy psychiatric help. And it was like, it was like, wow, this is this, we just the watched example. in real time what can happen when you when you resist that that fire that builds in you when you when you when someone sh- spits venom at you but instead calm yourself and meet it with love you can change the world yeah yeah i saw that and it's it's so inspiring uh that's exactly that's exactly the same type of thing right it's like you kill kill them with kindness i mean you trick everyone is acting rational from their view of the world and you have a lot of people who are justified in their own heads and their own pain and you know as soon as you show them some love like he he opened up right he could how could he come back again with with anger or hate i mean he could but it's a lot more difficult when someone's being so loving to you and i think that you know that that is that is the you know you see sometimes in the kung fu movies the 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 true master you know tries to diffuse things first and it's not the truth that you know the the best warriors may not be the strongest one but the one who you know can transform a situation and transform a person and i i find that to be such the battleground of our world right now. I mean, I'm battleground tongue in cheek because it's actually trying to avoid the battles. And I am not, not to discount the significance of the legitimate political battles at stake, but, Mm -hmm. but recognizing that these quote unquote battles are not one with force. They cannot, the, the last year has been this really powerful demonstrator to me that, you know, you, you, the, the harder you hit against the what you consider what you want to judge is wrong or bad or stupid or sexist or whatever um the less effective it is in fact it strengthens um yep. someone who who feels justified on, on their side of the coin and the only path i don't know where it leads but the only path to healing is is understanding and love letting Absolutely. go of the desire to convince letting the, go of the desire to debate letting go of the desire to 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 you know do what you think is best but recognize yep. that maybe I don't know what's best. The only thing that I know to be true is that kindness and love is 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 right. Yep. Couldn't agree more. Couldn't agree more. And, you know, um, I know you've been having, you know, putting this stuff out there for such a long time. Uh, and with Hug Nation, how long have you been doing that? So Hug Nation... Uh, I, started right after 911 um when wow there I, was know, this brief, I, I thought it was a while that's a so, pretty long while yeah so there was I, at the time i was living in a webcam house um oh, wow. and broadcasting everything in my life to the world and oh bet that you've got some <laughs> stories from that yeah, so I'll, I'll, I'll return to that but the, but so okay. but so what happened was right after 911 
Um, and I don't know what the math on that is, but that's like 17, 16 years, 17 years. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. but right after it happened, there was this media narrative of, well, first there was this like several days of world camaraderie. Mm. It was super powerful. And I thought, oh my gosh, this is going to be the thing that, that like knocks us out of our ruts of, of poor, you know, global interactions that that led to this kind of violence. But instead, then the media started to pick up this narrative of us, them, us, them, us, them. And yep. at the time, this was kind of early internet stuff. And I was like, wait, that that narrative doesn't work anymore. We can now connect to the entire world with a click. You know, we can, we could, you know, we, we're having this conversation. We're, I don't know how many hundred miles away from each other. And we're speaking to people that are all over the world. And that, that world seems to be so much more intricate and complex and nuanced and hopeful than one of us versus them. So I'm like, what if, what, what can we do to change the narrative? So we said, what if we do once a week, we do a worldwide group hug. We have people all over the world get in front of webcams or in front of their computers. And at a set time, we say, grab yourself by the shoulders. Imagine that the arms are those of all the others let go of who you are and just sink from the me into the we in the same way that a physical hug is kind of a dissolving of the, the ego into a, from, from the the I to a we doing that on a, on a scale that you could only do with intention and with digital tools. And so for the last 16 years, once a week, I've been leading people on a group hug to remind us that we're far more alike than we are different, no matter what you see on the news. Wow. That is so powerful. And uh, you know, big big kudos to you for that's a long time to stick with it too i mean 16 years is no joke now during these broadcasts you're how, how long are they like for for those who've never yeah. tuned in or you know know nothing <laughs> about it what else can they expect so first so at first we just did the hugs but then we found that uh it's more powerful if you kind of get a shared vibration going as a group and then yep. have the hug. So what I do now is uh, I usually speak for about 10 to 20 minutes on some topic, uh, something that's either a book I've read or an idea that's going on. There's this other great podcast called Positive Head where the guy does something similar where he <laughs> sucks about things going on his life. Um, but, I've heard uh, of it. But, <laughs> it's, you should look it up. Uh, yeah, um, I will. <laughs> but it's a, uh, you know, so I kind of find some area of growth often having to do with something that's going on in my life. Um, and then, uh, and then we do the hug and then it goes into much more of a free form. I do it live because I really love the energetic loop that happens. Even when I'm for the first 10 minutes, I'm generally just speaking directly into the camera and channeling whatever comes through. Mm-hmm. But still, I know that it's being received, and so it, it, it's things come out that I, I'm I always I'm always surprised by. In fact, I love the feeling that I'll be editing later and I'll be watching this video. I'm like, wait. This Pinkard guy is pretty. What? He's pretty smart. <laughs> Who's that? Like, like, where did this come from? I, like, I don't know if anyone else needed to hear this, but I certainly did. Yeah. But I, I was. I didn't quite hear it when it came out of my mouth. Yeah. And then, and then we do uh, after the hug. Then it gets more casual, and I kind of tune into the the live uh, chat, and uh, and it gets kind of silly. I'm very much. This is my year of the sacred silly. Oh, I like that. I like that. Well, um, so for for people that want to tune in obviously it sounds right up 99.9999 percent of the listeners alley where where do they find you online let's just go ahead and throw that out now since we're talking about it so probably the easiest thing to remember is hugnation.com and uh that has links to the the the, the youtube channel and the live broadcast which happen on my facebook live right now which is facebook.com slash john stin j-o-h-n-s-t-y-n and um yeah those are probably the, the easiest ways to to get a hold of me cool and find me but but really the other thing that i like to remind people of is that hug nation happens at one o'clock every monday west coast time and uh, we do the hug about 120 so wherever you are at 120 if you just want to like give yourself a hug and know that you're part of this global experience you are a part of the global experience. Yeah. And also, since it's recorded, I like to think of it as being bottled up in a digital bottle. And whenever you play and listen to it, and ex- you are, again, receiving the vibe, 
adding to the vibe and becoming an ambassador and amplifying the vibe. So it's, it's, I think I like to think of it existing beyond time and space. It's mm. this intentional hug that uh, can help us to recalibrate our hearts and remind us to be the, our highest selves. Super beautiful and super true. It is. It's like, Tune, everything's energy and it's the you know there's nothing ever lost it's like the beautiful thing about something being recorded or just tuning into a vibration or even a memory of a vibration so um right yeah that's that's wonderful yeah, one man. of the one of the reasons why i uh that I, I get been so you know consistent and motivated to do it is because uh, a lot of what i talk about is influenced by the lessons of burning man and the 10 principles and i had the experience like many people do where I find that when I'm amongst my tribe in a physical space, like at the burn or at a regional or at uh, you know an event that I, I so the, the shared amplification of everyone's highest self vibe, I am, I am my best self, mm. you know, and, and then I go into the default world and there's so many distractions, so many other voices, so many other pressures that the, this powerful, like, being dialed into this this powerful truth just kind of it gets harder and harder to 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 feel it and so knowing that i have a once a week recalibration and reminder of there's no matter even if there's no one around me physically that i that i pass in in the streets there's this community of people just like when i when i tune into the positive heads uh, facebook page there's this community of people who are reminding each other that no 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 this is who you are right yeah, there's such power in numbers and tribe and coming back together. I feel like it's all at this point, like pieces of the same puzzle that are now figuring out. Hold on. Light bulb is goes has went on. We're all an extended family like separation is an illusion. Now, where do I fit in this puzzle? You know, and it's such a beautiful, beautiful process to see unfold and to just be a part of. Exactly. And I think that that's I've been thinking about that, about how there's this. You know, there's the recognition that we're all one mm-hmm. and then the kind of awareness that, okay, within the one, I'm experiencing a singular consciousness. Mm-hmm. And so, so it, I believe that there is, there, there's no selfishness to being a little self-absorbed with your life and mm-hmm. your journey and that trying to, to spend energy on your healing is not a selfish pursuit. It is actually a, a significantly important because if you don't get clear in, in who that, what, in, in the truth of your piece of the puzzle, then you can act in a way that is actually a corrupted or influenced, um, way. Meaning like, you know, you have an, you have this epiphany that you want to be of service in the world. And so out of like guilt or something, you go, I'm going to go, you know, dig wells, which is great. But if you're doing that from a place of guilt or from a, a kind of a misdirected, I, I know I'm, it, it, that's not nearly as powerful as spending some time on yourself and then going, oh my gosh, yeah, I'm supposed to work in hospice. Like I, right. I'm, this is, this is what I'm supposed to do. Right. And then you do it from joy. Then you, then you're like, wow, it's not like joy, like skipping around the room and singing, but it's joy. Like I am dialed into my, th- I'm being the medicine. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Getting self you know, self straight is the most important thing. I'm sure you've heard the quote before something to the effect yesterday. I was smart and I wanted to heal the world today. I'm wise and want to heal myself. Something to that effect. It's like, yeah, so much truth. It's, it's everything. So it's truth. And you know, so I, I, my, 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 in, in 2000, I I won a Webby award for the best personal site for my personal site, which was called a cocky (laughs) bastard.com. And it was, it was this, it was this mass. So there was a time on the internet where I was legally technically officially the most narcissistic person on the entire internet oh my gosh that's so good what a trophy (laughs) (laughs) but you know the 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 gist of the site was that my journey is about self-love because if i don't love myself how can i love anyone else right and and that I, I took a lot of heat for that. You know, a lot of people were like, you know, you say you're all about hugs and, you know, why don't you go work in a soup kitchen? And I had this faith that like, yes, and I try to do good in the world and I try to do some charity stuff, but I just have this faith that if I really work on myself, I will be called to service in a way that is loving and is, is shining light as opposed to like fighting dark. Right. And so I had a beautiful awareness recently when I, 
without meaning to, just trying to follow my passion and my joy, which is Burning Man stuff, I created a homeless charity in San Diego with some friends that's all about gifting. Oh, We're wow. like trying to figure out how can we practice gifting year round? Cause we know it feels so good. And if you go to Burning Man, you, you have the experience, like there's so many people gifting that it's almost competitive. You, you almost have to like, <laughs> like convince people like, please come in and take a mojito. Please, right, please. right, right, right. I know you're like stuffed from the three tacos, two ice creams right. and margaritas you had on the walk down the road. But <laughs> and it's and, and that abundance is magical and it's wonderful. But but so we're when we we're in the real world or the excuse me the default world. I was like, wait a minute. There are so many people that are would be so happy with a pair of clean socks. You know, mm-hmm. with something so simple. Yep. Every big city in the world has a community of people that well, let's call them needy camp, and they just they're they they're going through a tough time right now and so mm-hmm. you from affluence camp can go visit needy camp mm-hmm. and pass out stuff and have these interactions that are not a from a place of oh poor you but Great. from a gifting place of like oh c- would this make you happy sweet plus one it makes me happy plus one right and so we've been doing this for uh seven years now every first saturday it's called first saturdays and we go out and we give out uh care packs of toiletries and clean socks and tons of donated clothes and we make it into a very festive experience and invite families to 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 volunteer because we we try not to see it as a actually it's not a homeless outreach event it's it's a it's a gifting practice ground trying Mm. to teach people that idea that who are you you're someone who helps yeah. When that changes in your brain, the whole world changes. Wow. And you do that, uh, you said seven years in San Diego? Yes. There's another chapter in Antelope Valley. Over the years, we've had chapters in other cities that have kind of popped up and, and, and faded and other things that have been inspired. It's where we have, if anyone is interested, I do have like an open source, like manual that I, I give to people who are like, I want to do something in my town. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's, it's pretty simple. You just go to where people have needs and say, Hey, I have an extra jacket. It's, yes, yeah. it's pretty simple. Wow. But there's some things that make it easier or things that like we've learned over the years, like people who live on the streets often have uh, dental issues. So you don't want to give like a bunch of corn nuts, you know, something chewy is better, that kind of thing. Right, right, right. Yeah. Wow. I, I would definitely um, like to come down, you know, San Diego is not too far from me. So I would love to come down and participate uh, in one of those. It's, you, it's, 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 I think it's surprisingly uplifting mm-hmm. you know, it's i know that a lot of people and i myself had these feelings of like oh it's so hard to go and drudgery get down to skid go to skid row and face the darkness and there's sometimes that's the case but we we've set up an environment that's like in a park and people come to us and it's 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 very it's it's a reminder that we're a lot more alike and and that that there's there's very <laughs> simple things you can do that can brighten someone's day in, in a significant way. And it also shows, I mean, in two, two directions. One, most people have a very two dimensional view of what a homeless person you know, mm-hmm. is. And, and so being able to go, Oh, this is a person who, you know, is, is, is a fully developed, loving, clever, joyful, whatever. And they've got their story. And we encourage people like, Hey, handing out things is one job. Listening to people is the most important job. Right. And just also demonstrating to people that, so many people who are who are on the street are so used to being ignored and and to have people treat them with dignity and respect is uh is a is a fantastic gift yeah it, it makes me think of um there's a book called power versus force i don't know if you're familiar with it or ever heard of it but it's an older book um and it's 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 all about kinesiology and you know like muscle testing stuff but it also has this whole section right. all about like as you sort of expand your perspective as a as a being as a soul and how you w- w- sort of move through these different levels of you know um of being and perspective and you know it talked about using homeless people as an example and it was like you know if you, when you're at a certain stage in your own evolution you may look at that person and it, it's these thoughts of get a job you bum blah blah you know something like that right at another stage right. of humanity it's like oh poor them i feel so sorry for them you know kind of vibes and then at another stage it's uh 
wow, what an interesting character. I wonder what his story is. Like, you know, what's right. his soul path? Why, why, you know, being a part of Source that has chosen that, what a fascinating uh, experience and, and badass that soul is. You know, what very, what radically different perspectives on the same individual right. so uh or or topic right so I, I i thought that was really interesting i read the book a long time that. ago and it's really stuck with me so yeah I'd, I'd encourage you to check it out it's a it's a relatively well-known book and the author actually one of the first people i reached out to to have on the show but he had just passed and i wasn't aware of it oh. and so but uh da- dr david hawkins i think is his name but anyway um awesome yeah super awesome now one, so, sorry go ahead also, another uh, one of the cool things that also happened recently is awareness at our first Saturdays is, you know, every every time uh, so and a volunteer will kind of run up and be like, oh, my gosh, we're about to run out of sandwiches. And I'm like, we're always going to run out of sandwiches. You know, that's <laughs> that's it's. And then everyone that you feed is going to be hungry the next day. Right. And so this idea of like trying to see the challenges that you have, not as this one massive battle or this one but lots of teeny tiny ones Mm. because if you go out into the world trying to solve some ill whether it's hunger or whether it's uh you know human trafficking or whatever it is if you are trying to to end that darkness you will end every single day defeated yeah and it's very difficult over a course of years to keep summoning it my first job out of college i worked with emotionally disturbed kids i graduated in psych and was a counselor and and these kids were so damaged that after working there for two years i was just burnt i was like i can't do it there's just i I don't have whatever there's saints that might have the strength but i do not and it took me 20 years to figure out that oh your job isn't to end whatever is broken your job is to be loving in the moment your job is to gift when you have the opportunity to gift and from that place when you start measuring things on am i going in the right direction not how far distance am i traveling Mm. then everything can be a win every sandwich is like win 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 and then at the end of the day even though you ran out you're like oh my gosh that was 40 wins today Woohoo! i want to do it tomorrow (laughs) and and that's a, a mindset that's actually sustainable yeah, yeah, that's such an important and powerful point. You know, you had sent over uh, a couple of your mantras to me, and I love that. That jumped right out direction, not distance, right? And uh, so many people it's miss that. It's very tempting. It's it's very tempting to to apply your default world trap of bigger, better, more, grander, and apply it to your spiritual path. You know, mm-hmm. and you and. Oh, I want to, I want to be a teacher. Okay. So I need to have the most popular podcast and I need yep. to fill, you know, have the, the the most high paying clients and I need to be a co and I, it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You, you just took your spiritual path and you turned it into, you know, <laughs> the entrepreneurial tradition. I mean, you're, it's, yep. a, it's the same thing, yep. but, but you know, a true, uh, the, the people I think who are worth listening to simply show up and speak their truth, mm-hmm. you know, and, and, and then it, people listen if there's meant to. And I think that if everybody, I think that, I, I think that it, it can be very dangerous when you start to get attached to, to the magnitude of what you're doing, because not everybody is supposed to uh, lead massive armies. Yep. Some people are supposed to raise awesome families. Some people are supposed to, you know, attend to the wound of the guy who's going to do the big thing. I mean, there's, there's, yep. it's, it's about following your truth as opposed to your, your default world definition of importance. Yeah. I think I, I like to think about a body, you know, I mean, like, there's some like these high profile rods and cones in the eye. They get to do all that. Ooh, groovy, check out the world. But that's not a more important cell than your toenail or your spleen cell. Every cell is supposed to do its own thing. Yeah. And if a cell gets out of whack and does the wrong thing, well, then you've got sickness. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think that's a super important point that one that really resonates with me doing this podcast as, as someone who's been a serial entrepreneur my whole life. This is really the first project I've approached with a purely um, like I am not interested in, I'm not thinking about how can I monetize this to the max or any of that is never, you know, two, two and a half, you know, years going on three years in. 
It's never been my priority even close to it. It's not, you know, and that's normally how my brain has worked. Like, you know, uh, thinking like, like an entrepreneur. And as a result, I've really noticed the, the impact that it's had has been, you know, wonderful. And it has been just more rewarding and more fulfilling than anything that I ever did when I, when I shifted into that, that sort of mode of, okay, what can I, what can I get out of it? And, and how much my keeping score, how many listeners or followers. Yeah. It's great that people are resonating with it and, and finding it. Um, but you know, who is it that said, you know, if you're always uh, attached to numbers, you'll always be miserable because numbers are endless. Right. And so right. you, you said it very well. You that's may so be, be the one that's supposed to tend to the guy. You may help one person, but that's more important than a million others when you look at the butterfly right. effect. And, and I think that's so important. You just important. don't have the vantage point. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the other thing about, about numbers and infinite, I, I had this, there was a time in my life, you know, cocky bastard. I was, I was a little, uh, fame focused, you know, I really, I was caught up in that. I wanted to be known. I wanted to have a big audience. Oh, I, and, I know. And I, I was going through this chapter where I was really frustrated by somebody that got attention for copying something I did. And I was all upset that I didn't get all, they got, they got a lot of publicity about it. I was all angry and a, and a, and a friend, uh, and, and big supporter was like, dude, you're so focused on getting more of an audience that you're not noticing the people that are here that get you and that are mm. totally vibing with this. And it's just like this light bulb went off where I was like, wait, oh my gosh. <laughs> I, I suddenly saw myself like in this tiny club uh-huh. and I'm playing on the, I don't play an instrument, but I, the visual of me like playing a guitar on a stage and having the, uh, uh, this tiny room packed with people dancing and having a blast and me on stage just going, man, I wish I was playing an arena. Mm-hmm. And, <laughs> and I, and that trap is that if you're all, if anybody is dancing to your music, you win. Yeah, totally. Absolutely. Uh- <laughs> Otherwise, there's always there's always more and more and, and more. Even and even if more, it's more, just more, you, more if you're dancing to your music, you win. Like, amen. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I just talked about this because I relate to your path a lot. You know, being making music and you know uh, having that desire to like, you know, how do I how do I reach as many people as possible and have as much influence on the world as possible and just like doing something from a pure intent and letting the cards fall where they may and not being hung up on that. It's so much more lovely <laughs> to live life that way. But and, some of know, us I are think, slow learners. <laughs> yeah. And I think there's an element of faith to that, you know, like you have to start going, all right, if I, I, I have to let go, well, I'll, I'll go, go to another one of my mantras that, that helps me with this. And I've, I've stickers that I put on everything. I think it's the one I gave you, which say, be present, have integrity, align with love. And if you yeah. don't have it my, on my car now. Yay. It's, it's on like the back you, of my car when you gave it to me last time I saw you. I love it. It's, it's excellent. It's like if I, if I, in some ways, I think that's the instruction manual for life. You know, that if whenever I start to think, oh my gosh, I need to make this happen or I need to control this outcome or I need to, you know, manipulate the situation and I, and I start to stress, it's because I'm, I think I need to make something happen. And, and then if I follow those three things, be present. Okay. Slow down. Be present have integrity. And to me, I, I, integrity is, is being in alignment with that inner truth that we've been talking about that inner, whatever it is, that is your truth, your values, your, your calling. Um, and then taking that and then aligning with love. And then once you go through those three, then act and whatever happens then will lead to the right thing. It could lead to you losing your partner, you losing your job. It could lead to a collapse of what you thought you wanted, but I have absolute faith that it will lead to where you're supposed to be. Absolutely. I love that. Yeah. Well, now seems like a good time to tell those of you who aren't familiar a bit about our sponsor, Gaia. I've been a big fan of Gaia for many years now, which is why they're the only content provider I have ever reached out to in regards to potentially supporting the Positive Head podcast. So needless to say, I'm very excited they're now supporting the show. Gaia truly is my personal go-to source for streaming consciousness content on the web. They have an incredible 7,000 plus exclusive videos covering 5,000 years of wisdom. 
They have a plethora of amazing content to always keep your positive head spinning. For example, in the brand new series, Beyond the Legend, best-selling author of Chariot of the Gods, Eric Von Daniken, takes us beyond the myths and legends that have shaped our view of history to present an alternate view of historical events, megalithic structures, and archaeological discoveries. Eric's been researching this stuff for over 50 years, so if you've ever wanted to deep dive into these sorts of topics uh, that you're just not going to find on traditional networks, Eric is doing just that on Beyond the Legend. And that's just one example of fascinating content you can find on Gaia. As you all hear me constantly say, it's a daily conscious effort to maintain an elevated vibration. And if you're looking to go deep down the rabbit hole to do so, Gaia is the best place I know of to do it, period. And you can sign up for your first month for only 99 cents at Gaia.com forward slash positive head. That's spelled G-A-I-A dot com forward slash positive head. Check it out. Now, you have one other mantra that you shared with me that uh, was a little uh, tougher for me to uh, to uh, define. So I got to hear, what is what is crap or cone? Oh, this is a good one. <laughs> and that's this- three, wor- three words, guys. I said it like it was one. Crap or cone, C-O-N-E. So, what is that? Uh, okay, at every moment in your life, you have got an ice cream cone in one hand, and you've got one <laughs> foot in dog crap. At every moment in your life, you've got aches and pains and people that don't like you and you've got work to get to be done. And at the same moment, you've got sunsets and laughing babies, your favorite food and your good friends. At every moment, all those things are happening. You have all Mm. way more stimulus than you could focus on at all times. So the degree in which you enjoy your life is based on where you place your focus. So if you Uh are like just can't get happy there's a good chance you have set down your ice cream cone and you are just focused so much on your your foot (laughs) it it happens all the time where people will like they'll set down their ice cream cone in social situations and they'll go like oh my gosh you have got to smell this check out my oh my gosh i've got the worst poop on my shoe (laughs) everybody get down here let's check out this shit (laughs) isn't that true i mean i'm so guilty of it i think it's it's very common you know we we commiserate and uh we do it to ourselves and other people when there's when there's something and and there's this people will meet that with like oh yeah well you got to be realistic and i was like realistic there's like an infinite number of things in reality and and so Uh we really have to have discipline that isn't to say that you don't pretend that there's no shit if you you know want to take some time to scrape off your shoe or pay attention and be present enough that you avoid it as you're walking absolutely but it means that you you know just don't sacrifice the avalanche of ice cream that's always around you because uh you're so obsessed about your shoe Crapper cone. I like that. I've had like been running like around it. my theme camp and I've been like right. running around and like, oh gosh, this has to be done. And, and I hear this voice off in the distance. Hey, Halcyon, Crapper cone. <laughs> <laughs> right, 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 right. You're like, right. got me. <laughs> you got me. Got it. <laughs> so you wrote, uh, when last time that I saw you, you also gifted me with a lovely book that you wrote. I guess it's been many years ago, but just the title of it alone, I want to talk about. I mean, of course, the content uh, is, is about the title but it's love more fear less float more steer less i love that you're so good with words uh i'm (laughs) such a sucker for like catchy sayings and you've got a lot of them um tell tell us a little bit about that sure well i mean and and i've i've found that um i don't know if it's because my memory is so horrible or what but i i respond so well to little phrases that will snap me out of a mindset you know like if i'm there's whether it's crap or cone direction not distance i mean these these little things that uh will will reflect back to me like oh i'm in a bad thought pattern right now and Mm -hmm. love more fear less uh was kind of just this download i got long ago where i was like oh my gosh it's so simple it's so Mm -hmm. simple the when equation is it, that basic. It's that basic. <laughs> when, 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 and so I had like a 10 year period where like that every, every time I had, well, I still try to, but I was really focused whenever I had a decision path and, and I challenge you to do this. Like if you're trying to figure out what should I do here? What should I do here? There's usually one path that is the loving path and one path mm. that is the fear path. You know, it's mm. like, oh, I'm afraid that this is going to happen. Like, okay, well, <laughs> 
that you just you just answered it so that that like love more fear less love more fear less it's it's and it's it it's so simple and yet uh i need to be reminded of it all day long and then the second part of it the float more steer less is like okay so you're you're acting in this loving way and this is kind of similar to the be present have integrity align with love but it's like recognizing that let go of the desire to steer your way to where you think you're supposed to be, but to trust more, to float more, to tune into the, this, this divine flow of, I, I lose the words when it comes to this point, but there, you know, when you start to actually like listen to what's what, where you're being pulled and then paddle in that direction, yeah, that's way more effective than saying, I'm going to make this happen no matter what. And even though every door is being slammed in my face, like I, I'm kind of, I, I don't really respond well to a lot of the like motivational talks about, you know, like never give up, never give up, never give up. I'm like, mm-hmm. well, wait, I mean, if, if everyone is slamming the door in your face, like, is there, maybe just, just take a meditate for a second and figure out if there's <laughs> something that seems totally right. Right, right. <laughs> Yeah, this makes me think of something that I've been talking about so much lately because it's something that's resonating so close to my own journey. And that is just this floating more and steering less. And, you know, as someone who's such a doer, I've been steering my whole life and so many cre- ideas come through and OK, I'm going to go for that one. OK, yes, I'm excited. I've got a lot of energy and let's go. And you know, instead really proactively having opening dialogue with, you know, higher self and saying, right. okay, you see the chessboard way better than I do. Maybe the, maybe the thing to do here, the way the dance is supposed to be danced is I come through with what I'm feel, whatever rocks I feel like turning over and I follow those, but with a very healthy sense of detachment and knowing that whatever I'm thinking of is, is, uh, you know, at the very least of maybe what my higher self can see. And if I would just take my hands off the wheel for a moment and play my role of experiencing and let my higher self steer, I might just end up through some means I would have never steered to myself in a place that's way better than anything I could have imagined for myself. Yes. And I think people often, they, they, there's a reaction to that, that think, oh, that means, oh, I just do nothing just sit on the couch all day and do nothing. It's like, no, 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 no. And there's actually a lot of spiritual teachers that address this very thing. Byron Katie talks about this. Eckhart Tolle talks about this. A Course in Miracle talks about this, about how like the, the Course in Miracle says, has a line about, I need do nothing, mm. which sounds at first like, oh, do, don't do anything. No, 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 no. I need do nothing. Meaning like float, listen. Mm-hmm. And then act. You're, you're going to act, but you're going to act from a place of, of, of calling as opposed to forcing. Right. And, uh, and, 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 and then, you're, then, then you are an, acting in service to something larger than itself instead of trying to be a general in a, in a landscape that you have no vantage point to really understand. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, you have a, you have a new book that you're working on? Yes. I, I, I had a really cool experience about a year ago where, I was working with a coach named Jesse Gross and I was trying to figure out like, what do I want to do before I die? And I'm like, I got to write a book, uh, like of all my accumulated wisdom, something I can pass on to my nephews. And, and so I dedicated, you know, a morning practice to writing every day. And then I sat down to write and I, I didn't, this like wise stuff didn't come out. Instead it was all these these stories from my wacky years at discovering the internet and living in a webcam house and all this, like, oh, which I meant the webcam house, all these like crazy things that I went through on this path to of self-discovery over the, you know, my twenties and thirties. And so I went to the coach. I'm like, uh, this isn't what I meant to do. He's like, too bad. You know, <laughs> you, 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 your job is to honor the muse. You just sit down. And if this is the book you're supposed to write, you got to write it, you know? And so started having this really beautiful experience of, um, of, revisiting chapters of my life the you know the when when the internet was small and i used to have faith that it was going to solve everything and uh and then chapters going in the adult industry a little bit and just all these kind of like things that i'm still trying to figure out how i'm gonna make it public but Mm -hmm. uh it was uh it was also a beautiful thing because i i i feel like at some point in my life i made a deal with some entity where it said, would you rather have a great memory or would you rather be present? 
and I chose mm. being present. Yeah. Of course, I don't remember that experience and I don't exper- remember lots of experiences. In fact, if you're listening to this and we run into each other at an event, I would love to re-meet you because I forget <laughs> everything. Um, and so this, the process of this writing was, it was like, I had all these like dried out husks of memories that just started getting filled up with, with moisture and, and names and people and connections and even like stories about myself that I thought, I thought that I had done this thing. And then when I started to write it out, I was like, actually, I did that with the help of this person's support and this ex-girlfriend and this and this. And it became, yeah. you know, regardless of how I, I learned the process of writing the book is it may not be about publishing it at all, but it was a, a process of, of healing for myself and in reaching out to some of these people in my past that, that, you know, my current narrative didn't include. And now it does. Wow. Yeah. I, I relate to you on that for sure. It seems like uh, I saw something re- recently and it said well, a lot of times, you know, new study geniuses are very forgetful. And I'm like, yes, I have some. <laughs> I'll, I'll run with that for sure. Cause I definitely could have that experience sometimes where it's just like life is, uh, there's so much and so much going on in my inner world, it's like where, you know, and then when you live, you know, like we both do in a sort of a public way and you're sharing things out there and it's like, did I say this to myself, to the world that you are all people who listen and I'm like telling them some story and they're like, yeah, yeah, I've heard this story. I'm like, oh yeah, that's right. (laughs) (laughs) It's kind of wild. (laughs) Yeah. It's, and and I, and I, I find that, that the vast majority of people that I meet and re-meet are very compassionate. It, it's it's rough when every once in a while people's feelings are hurt because they feel like if the experience, if I didn't remember the experience, it wasn't important to me. And right. it's hard to explain to someone whose memory works that way. Like, of course, I remember like our night together that we were talking all night. I, it's, it's vivid to me. And I'm like, can you talk me back through it? And because that's, I genuinely, I generally lose these, there's these magic things that happen, but um so my apologies in advance and did I already say <laughs> let's re-meet? Yeah, I did. I forgot. <laughs> you know, I, I, I teased Perfect. a little bit about about the uh, the webcam house. So uh, I'll tell you a quick story about that. Yeah, yeah, please. Yeah, I'd love to hear a story about that. And of course, uh, the go-to, I, any story of synchronicity or serendipity, ah. uh, I l- positive paranormal story. I love good stories. So please share. Awesome. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll just, the first, the I'll just say that, for two years, I lived in a house that had uh, 27 cameras that were on 24 hours a day with audio. So everything I did, every time I took a shower, every time I had sex, it was all broadcast. Wow. And people often will say like, oh my gosh, people got to see you shower. And I was like, dude, that is so, that was such a minor deal for this experience. <laughs> you know, it's like a little bitty window. There's like 320 by 240 back in the day, bandwidth was small. My doodle was like a little bitty, like four <laughs> pixels of penis, you know? But... On a good day, you to Photoshop a, that or what? Before <laughs> Photoshop, damn it! <laughs> but but what was what was really vulnerable and difficult was knowing, like when I it was embarrassing was when I lost my temper or mm. if I gossiped, and mm. learning to live in a way that what if, like what if you're in a glass house? What if somebody like would you say something out loud that you would say to their face? It became this super intense high speed therapy where I had to be like, am I at peace with who I am in the world? You know, like if you, sure you could take a screenshot and you'll see me scratching myself. But if you watched for a day, would I be living a life that I would be proud of? And then the things that I, that weren't okay, I had to be like, okay, I got it. I can't, I can't gossip anymore. I can't speak ill of something, someone behind their back. And if I'm going to lose my temper, I got to, or get frustrated. I got to think, is it worth it? Would I, would I demonstrate this to the world? It was awesome. It was really, it was really healthy. What a fascinating um, uh, way to experience uh, gr- self growth. <laughs> like, yeah. wow. Was it something now where a lot of, how many people were tuning in? Do you know? I mean, was it, it you know, was it a, it was, a lot it was of people a, watching you? It, it was far more experimental than it was uh, financially successful. So the, mm-hmm. it was not a huge crowd. Um, I did have a period of time and I don't know what the age limit on this podcast is, but I had a period of time where I actually became a little addicted to masturbating on cam. Cause it was like, oh, wow. like, cause the idea of like, even though I was by myself, 
mm-hmm. like having an audience made it into this mm-hmm. like participatory thing. Right. And so, so I, I would, I would like start to get naked. I'm like, Oh wait, there's no one in the chat room. Eh, I'll do this later. <laughs> All right. <laughs> That's so funny, um, man. What uh, a trip. But, okay. So I want to tell you a story of synchronicity. Um, okay. I was, yes. I was at, uh, an event about a year and a half ago and I walked by, uh, the vendors booths and there was a booth for a, a, a company called ritual where that makes this really amazing clothing, like rockstar clothing, no compromise, spare, no expense. And I just, I love the clothing. I love, uh, the people who make it, but it's always just been way out of my budget. Like I just, I'm more of, I even have videos about how to make burning man clothes where I say, go to the women's section, cut off the sleeves. Uh, you know, <laughs> of, of like a, go to a, go to a thrift store and went by women's clothes. That's, that's generally my, most of my outfits, but, and I'm right. walking by this, this, uh, this ritual booth and a woman runs out who had just watched a hug nation video. And she's like, Oh my gosh, Halcyon, I want to talk to you. And, and I would never try on clothes that I'm not going to buy. I just feel it, for some reason, it just makes me feel so rude to a salesperson who's commission based. And so I just, I would never do it. But for some reason, this person's like, Oh, I think this woman would like to spend a few minutes, even if I'm not going to buy anything. And so I said, as she's, as we're talking, I'm like, hey, and I see this white coat in the corner of my eye. I'm like, Oh my gosh, can I, can I try that on? She's like, of course, come on in. So I go into their booth and, and, and I put it on and I see myself in the mirror and I'm just like tingling. I'm like, Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm like, if, if, if I was delivered, you know, stone tablets on a mountaintop, I would want to walk down the mountain wearing this. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I know the ritual <laughs> stuff. I've seen their, I've seen their, them at, before at a uh, festival. So definitely really, really nice stuff. It, it's, it's just gorgeous. It, and that the quality is uh, anyway, it's, but you know, that's for other people, for rock stars, not for me. And, and, and I tried on and it's, I have a picture of my grandfather who is, uh, he used to be the co-host of Hug Nation actually. And a picture of him, uh, wearing this all white outfit that he got in, in, uh, Israel. And, and, uh, I, I'm like, this is like my Burning Man version of my grandpa's outfit. I'm like, this is so perfect. Oh, I'm like, wait, I, I, cool. and, and then I look at the price or I, actually it didn't have the price. So I finally, oh my gosh, I got to ask. And they quoted me like, well, this is the price, but we would love for you to have it. So they gave me a, you know, a friends and family price that was still like you know eight times more than anything i've ever spent on even my best suit you know just like right. like uh, uh, and then i'm looking in the mirror and i'm still feeling that vibration and mm-hmm. in the last couple of weeks i had done two broadcasts one was about having faith that the resources will come to you you know making mm-hmm. choices not compromising in advance but in mm-hmm. Listening to what you truly want and then having faith that the resources will come. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm being tested. And then, and then another <sighs> broadcast was about, was about, um, how much, m- how much better it is to spend money to an artisan, like a a thousand dollars spent on a table at Ikea is way worse than a thousand dollars to a craftsperson who's going to make you a table. Right. And so I'm like, oh my gosh, like I'm, I'm so vibrantly, profoundly, and, and I'm being asked to walk the walk. Like I literally just Mm -hmm. told these lessons and I'm being asked to walk the walk. I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And then on the, the, the boom box in the, in the booth, a song by Orbital comes on, Halcyon and on. I'm like, Oh my God. I just got like <laughs> chills up and down. I'm like, all right, oh my gosh. I'm buying this coat. I'm buying oh. this coat. Oh, wow. So, and then there's a, there's a post log, which is that five days later, I got contacted by my old CEO, CEO asking if I wanted to sell some stock in the company that I still had. And so boom, the resources came. Wow. That is awesome. I, I think that is such a true perspective you know such a powerful perspective for people to adopt to and it's it's living from that state of abundance it doesn't mean to be frivolous and wasteful but rather like in that case like here is something that was you know from the beginning of the interaction on down to seeing the coat to its connection to your to your grandfather to you know then the signs coming in the way you were feeling you know the lessons you had just shared on the show all of that added up to this is, this is, you know, a positive thing to do and I'm abundant enough to do it. And 
And of course, it doesn't surprise me at all that money came from an unexpected source right there after. Exactly. I mean, amazing. And it's, I, I, they, so they measured me and I, you know, months later, I, it, my personalized custom coat came and I love it. Oh man. That's so <laughs> epic. So, so epic. I think I've seen a picture, uh, you've posted with it. Is it a really long, uh, yes. white it, coat? Yes, 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 yes. It is amazing. I'm not shy about posting pictures. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're definitely not. <laughs> definitely not. And that's a good thing, my friend. This has been so awesome. I do. Well, actually there's one other thing that I want to ask you before we, we kind of wind down here um in you know as a 20 year burner i mean you know that is quite uh the the burning man resume um what do you think about you know a lot of people and of course you've probably been hearing it since year one oh my gosh it's changing it's going to hell right i mean it it never stops with that sort of message what I'm, i'm curious as someone who's been uh such a um, a staple now, you know, being, like I said, pink heart, your camp that you co-founded is, has a beautiful pink presence right there on the playa. And for the, any of you guys, you know, that are burners, I'm sure you've seen it or it, it, it will stick out to you next year, if not, but where do you see, um, you know, burning man going? I mean, what is your kind of vision and take on, on where it's at? And, and certainly a lot of changes in recent years, um, Absolutely. And growth, <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I, I used, for the, for, for the longest time, I would, I would push back when people go, I hear it changed. I hear it changed. I hear it's different now. And I'd be like, no, 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 no. And, and the truth is, especially in the last few years, it's changed. And I think that's inevitable. And I think that that's, uh, that is leading us to a, a new set of challenges as a community. You know, it's, mm. it's it's bringing it's no longer underground it is now something that is part of our culture you know presidents and sitcoms and talk show hosts Mm. all joke about it Um, and and people in every walks of life including people connected to all sorts of significant resources are having these burn experiences and as long as they participate and as long as they follow the 10 principles i want everyone to have the experience yeah. So the, 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 the downside, it's no longer our secret place where the weirdos can hang out. The upside yeah. is good, good. Now, now we can, can start to really infiltrate into, to healing the world there. The other thing that I think is significant about where we're going and the growth of it is that there's so much exciting things happening in the regional network and in the regionals mm. and these events yeah. that are happening all over the world. There's just, there's, I went to one in Western Australia. I just went to the one uh, catharsis in Washington, DC. And you have these, I mean, the burning man doesn't scale, you know, not everybody can go to this one event in the desert at this one week, but yeah, as a, as a movement, it can scale. And, and yeah. when I s- seen that the energy and the transformation that's happening in these smaller events, yeah. it is so cool. And also the, if people are craving, I would, uh, people go, Oh, I, I heard, I think I, I missed the boat. You know, I wish I went to Burning Man back when it was, you know, when it was real. I'm like, well then sweet, then go to a regional because those yeah. ones are super, you know, they don't have the police presence. They have the ability. If you want to make a big impact on the event, you can do so. And so I think that the really exciting things happening are at the regionals um, and and the the Fly Ranch experiment, which is just getting underway. They just bought property that next to where the event is held, right. and and it's uh, I got to visit it a couple years ago, and it, it's like it's got hot springs and it's got playa type areas and it's got marshland and it's got wild horses. It's just it I. Th- it's, it'd be interesting to see where it goes right now. They're still in the process of trying to like ask the community for um, input, which I think is beautiful. They're not dictating just as Bernie man wouldn't, wouldn't work. If Bernie man said, this is what we're going to do. Bernie man works because they create a framework and then invite the genius of the community. And I think Bernie man is an experiment in temporary community. And I think, I hope what happens is this fly ranch experiment becomes an experiment in sustainability Mm. and sustainable community and sustainable art and like you know having an art project that people add to every year for 300 years and it's also a living environment and it's also a farm you know a hydroponic farm and it's like i I, you think about the, the 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 degree of brain power and skills that go into making just mind blowing things at Burning Man. If a little bit of that could be channeled to some sustainable projects, yeah. um, I think I think it actually closes the loop of the one weakness of Burning Man, which is that so much energy goes um, to something that is uh, transitory. 
not necessarily 100% bad, but if, if they also added to that this kind of sustainability part, I think it could get uh, really, really interesting as a world-changing movement. Absolutely. Yeah, I, lo- I love your perspective on all of it. And uh, if uh, it does indeed turn into a sustainable, permanent, uh, you know, sort of village type infrastructure, I, I certainly know, hope and believe that 300 years from now, there will be a little pink heart there somewhere. Uh, that is yes! a reflection <laughs> of you and the wonderful energy that you bring to the world and have brought to the Bernie, the burner community. And uh, Halcyon, this has been absolutely amazing, my friend. I do have one last short question for you. I'm ready. And that question is in 60 seconds or less, what is the meaning of life according to Halcyon? <sighs> the meaning of life? It's to experience life. It's to uh, see that everything is an adventure and or a classroom. And every moment of your journey is a chance to elevate the love vibration of the universe and be grateful for the honor and enjoy the ride. Whee! <laughs> Lovely. You are an amazing soul. Thank you so much for, for being you, my friend. Uh, thank you, brother. I so appreciate what you do in the world and being on the same same journey, walking the path with you. I, I love you. I love you as well. And I look forward to the next time our, our paths cross in 3D. Until then, journey well. Well, everyone, that concludes this week's interview episode. If you have enjoyed this positive download from our hearts and minds to yours, please take a minute, give us a rating or review on iTunes. Since iTunes is the holy grail of all things podcasting, uh, your good reviews help us to reach more listeners. Also, we would be extremely appreciative if you would tell your friends and family about the show. Our sincere intent with the Positive Head podcast is to spread positivity to the world. Because, well, because we're selfish, quite honestly. Uh, I say that jokingly, but really only halfway joking. I'm referring to the good kind of selfish based on the knowing that we all get what we give in this life. Because when we give, we're actually always giving to extensions of self since we're all really one in the same consciousness, just in different bodies. So if you want to be a good selfish along with us by helping to spread the positivity, By all means, please proceed to shout about the Positive Head podcast from your rooftop. (laughs) Otherwise, as you continue on your fabulous journey in this 3D reality, be sure to remember this. As long as you ain't dead, you're already positive ahead. Journey well, everyone, and thank you for being.